Well, hello, everyone, and thank you very much for giving your most precious commodity your time. It's a pleasure to spend this short time with you all. And looking at the chat, I can see pe we have people from the far west coast of America, all through America, over the Atlantic, UK, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and over into Asia. So I, if I've got this right, we're covering about 15 different time zones. So it's absolutely lovely to see you all. Today, we're going to do what we call an introduction, an overview of a program that we recently launched called the uh, Creativity Coach Training Program, a program that trains and qualifies people to be an international creativity coach. So I'm going to structure today's meeting in the following way. I will introduce my uh, companion, my colleague, my friend, Eric. And, and I'm sure most of you know Eric very well, but I will introduce Eric. Then I will give a brief overview of us, Noble Manhattan, so you have a feeling for who we are. We'll then talk about the Creativity Coach Training Programme. I will ask Eric a number of short questions to set the scene, to give you a feel for the program, to give you an understanding of what it is, how it works, the content, the learning outcome, and then we will throw it open. And any of you can ask any questions that you want. Um, the total time, somewhere between 45 minutes to 50 minutes, depending on how many questions that there are. While you are listening, it would be great if you could keep yourself muted, but of course, unmute yourself when you want to ask a question. Okay, so here we will begin. Um, let me first of all start by introducing my colleague, my friend, my partner, Eric Meisel. Now, I don't want to embarrass Eric, but those of you who have been within involved in the coaching world would know that Eric is regarded as a, and no, it's, it's not too strong a word to use the word legend, a legend within the coaching genre. He has been around for decades. He is regarded as one of the, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, the grandfather of the coaching world. But he has a foot in two camps. Not only is he one of the world's leading experts in coaching, but he is also one of the world's leading experts in creativity. He has written over 50, yes, five zero, over 50 books. How he does that is beyond me. And he has written books on all types of creativity. He works with some of the top people in the world in the creative arts. And when people like the World Writers Association have their annual congress, they invite Eric to be their keynote speaker. And Eric actually wrote the Creativity Coach Training Program. So he is the author of that program. So we'll come back to Eric in a moment. Let me tell you a little bit about Noble Manhattan. Noble Manhattan, or the full name, Noble Manhattan Coaching, is a coach training organization. We have been established now for 23 years. We started off as a, a UK, an English registered company, but it has grown. We now have offices in 25 countries around the world. We have trained just over 25,000 people as coaches, life coaches, executive coaches, team coaches, and so on. And we deliver our training in eight separate languages. I want to tell you a little bit more about the company, because not only do we train men and women to be coaches, which is very important, but almost, almost just as important we support and look after them so that they can build their client base, build their business, get what we would call an ROI, return on investment, and start to earn a good income 
as a trained and qualified coach. I'm going to show you uh, one of my screens here. I've got a number of screens. And I just want to give you a, a quick whistle stop tour over the company because whenever someone becomes one of our international students, everything that I'm about to show you is available to them and most of it at zero cost. So let me start by showing my screen. So first of all, this is our uh, main website, Noble Manhattan Coaching, uh, just showing all of the various programs that we have. Um, we then own a magazine called International Coaching News. It is the biggest magazine within the coaching world. And it goes out, let me scroll to the bottom, to just over 100,000 people every issue. We give it away for free. We employ managing directors, editors, IT, webmaster, uh, graphics people, all so on. But we give the magazine away for free. And we allow all of our students and coaches everywhere in the world to write for the magazine, which helps you to raise your brand, your image, your profile, and helps you to become well known. We own coaching support, which is a, um, a division that runs physical meetings all over the world and helps people to meet each other. We deliver lectures and talks one evening every month. We own the biggest register of coaches on the planet, and the name is good. It's called coachfinder.com. And anyone else outside of Noble Manhattan has to pay. All of our students can have a free lifetime register, and it allows clients or coaches to find you. So Coach Finder, people can search by map by name of coach, by type of coaching, and so on. We own a radio station called Coach Radio International. We broadcast in 11 languages. We allow all of our people to have their own monthly radio show in your own language. And we've done a deal with a little company called iTunes. You might not have heard of them. And all of our shows appear on iTunes and stay there forever. And that is something we do to help you to raise your brand, your image, your profile, and become known. We have coaching tools, which is more IT technical. If you need us to, you don't have to. We will build you websites, blog sites, vlog sites, do search engine optimization, help you with all your social media, and so on. We own a publishing arm called Books for You. I love the name, booksforyou.online. And for all of you and all of our students, we will publish how much? Free of charge. Ebooks, articles, case studies, white papers, and so on. We, we will set you up with what we call lead generation pages or sales pages to help you generate leads. And we have a very uh, specific, uh, specialized division called the Alpha Group, purely for people who want to work within the business community, works with business owners. Now, there's more, but I don't want to bore you all with that. Uh, the point is that not only do we train you to be a magnificent coach, but then we do everything in our power to help you to build, grow, develop your business and attract paying clients. So that's enough about Noble Manhattan. I'd like now to just engage with Eric. I'm going to ask Eric a number of simple questions about the program. That will help to generate your thinking. And then we will open the, um, uh, the meeting and people can ask any questions that they they wish okay so good morning eric and for you it's 8 a.m in the morning in sunny uh, outside san francisco could you tell me 
a little bit more about the background to this particular program? First, Gerard, I have to say that was awfully impressive. I've never seen the description of your company. <laughs> I've known little bits of it, but to see it all in one place uh, was excellent and wonderful. Thank you. Background to the program. I'm going to start all the way back. I'm going to give myself a, a minute or two of freedom here to go all the way back. I started out as a math and science boy. That's where I thought I would be in physics or astronomy or someplace like that. That stopped interesting me at some point at about the age of 16 or 17 when I started college too early. Started college too early, flunked out quickly because I had no interest in being in college. This was Vietnam War time, so brilliantly I enlisted in the Army. That was one of those smart things that an 18-year-old does. Managed to survive that, got out. And at 21, I started getting a degree in philosophy. That's what you do when you have no idea what you were doing. But about at 24, the, the writing bug struck. I probably knew I would be a writer all along. I was reading fiction, reading the existential writers, reading, 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 growing up. So the writing came naturally as a next step. And so at about the age of 24, I started writing and actually had a ghostwriting career in my 20s. I actually lived by writing, which is hard to do. But by about the age of 30 or 32 or 33, somewhere in there, we started having kids. And it was no longer an act of good faith to use existential language to continue writing when it wasn't bringing in enough money. So I retooled as a psychotherapist. That was the next thing I did. I quickly stopped believing in the psychotherapy model. Namely, I didn't think I was treating mental disorders. I thought I was dealing with life problems. I focused exclusively on creative and performing artists, even back then as a psychotherapist, but didn't want to do psychotherapy. So I transitioned to what I called creativity consulting because coaching wasn't a thing yet. This is a long time ago. Coaching wasn't really a thing yet. But when coaching became a word, then I renamed myself a creativity coach and I think invented the profession of creativity coaching about 35 years ago or thereabouts. And so I've been working with individual creativity and, and creative and performing artist clients for these last 35 years and training creativity coaches in trainings that I've been running for the last 20 years or so. The trainings have been excellent. But I wanted there to be a way for my peeps to get a certificate or diploma, something that was internationally recognized. I was not offering that. I didn't want to certify people. That was a, a level of complexity that was a little beyond me. I wanted to train them, but not certify them. And then I learned about you through a mutual acquaintance of ours. And we began chatting about the possibility of certifying creativity coaches. And we quickly agreed that that was a brilliant thing to do. And so I've created this program with you. It's very robust. People who have poked their noses into it will see that it's rich and large. It has 260 lessons divided into 52 weeks. That can sound like an overwhelming number, but they're crisp lessons and they're all smart and interesting, I believe. So even though there are a lot of them, they're, they're easy to digest. Plus, you don't have to finish it in, in a week or in 52 weeks. There's some leeway there. You can spend as much time as you need. There are also pre-recorded webinars that I think are very interesting. And then there's the reading of my book, The Coach's Way, which is my most recent book, which I think does a beautiful job of leading new coaches and all coaches all the way through the first section, first session, the second session, what to do between sessions. I think it's a, it's quite a useful, uh, complementary resource. And then you get all of Noble Manhattan in addition to that. So the background of the program, to say it simply, is I've been training creativity coaches for a long time, working with creative performing artist clients for a long time, saw this opportunity to finally certify creativity coaches leapt at the opportunity, and here we are. Right. Well, thank you, Eric. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask, and I've got sort of two that I'll roll them in together, is what will people learn during the program? And the other linked question would be, 
what knowledge or skills or ability will they take away? Well, let's start with what they'll learn. To say it simply, they'll learn about the creative personality, which has many particular attributes and difficulties. The creative person both has many qualities that we admire and that work for him or her, but then also qualities that maybe need reining in or, or need need help with. So they'll learn about the creative personality. They'll learn about the creative process, which is which goes in in one ear and out the other, that phrase, the creative process, it just zips on by. But in fact, there is a creative process that people who are creative or who work with creatives need to understand. And the headlines there is that the creative process comes with mistakes, messes, pratfalls, experiments that don't work, things that people have to survive as well as understand. So a deep understanding of the creative process will allow coaches and their clients to maybe finally begin their creative work or finally create their creative work or finally send their work out into the marketplace. So they'll learn about the creative process. They'll learn about the special challenges of different groups. There are many modules on the special challenges of writers, which is a very large group of human beings out there. Many people are writing. They'll learn about the special challenges of visual artists, the special challenges of performers. They'll understand some of those things that are very basic, but that need understanding, and that's how to break through everyday resistance. It's not so easy to get to our creative work each day. And so we need to provide tactics and strategies for clients to help them crack through their everyday resistance and deal with blocks. We have to help clients in a kind of common sense way deal with the anxiety of the creative process. And we could spend an hour or two just talking about why that process provokes anxiety, but we don't quite have time for that. In other words, they'll learn everything they need to know about what a creative person experiences, who he or she is inside, and what his or her challenges are that must be addressed. Maybe you can give me the second question again. Sure. Um <laughs> What what knowledge or skills or ability will people take away having done the course? There's a big headline takeaway, and that is they'll learn to do coaching effortlessly. I think that's a that's a big deal point because certainly folks will learn strategies and techniques and information and this and that. But the main thing is that they'll learn that this can be easy. And it's important that they learn it be easy because, as you know, many coaches do this training or that training, take this workshop or that workshop, but never quite actually start working with clients because sitting across from another human being scares them a little, or they're just a little reluctant to take another person's life in their hands, so to speak. So one of the main takeaways is to help coaches, new coaches, but all coaches, understand that this can be easy and effortless and really enjoyable rather than heavy lifting. And I think the main headline there is if a, if a person understands that her complete job is to be of a little help versus being an expert, so to speak, lower the bar from I am an expert to let me be of a little help like a friend might be or a wise aunt might be or any wise human being might be. Let me just be of a little help. This program will help coaches understand that as a fundamental place of standing, place of place to stand, the ease of coaching. And then, of course, they'll take away an understanding of how to begin sessions, how to end sessions, how to provide smart homework between sessions, how to monitor progress. All of the things that coaches must need to know, plus all of the special issues of creative performing artists that um, this program robustly teaches them. So they'll learn coaches' coaching skills, the skills they need to know as a coach, and then the special skills they need to know as a creativity coach. Right. Thank you. And, and just two more questions before I open it to everyone. Looking at this particular program that we both worked on now, um, for many, many months, creating it, up, putting it on our learning management system, making sure it's structured correctly. To your knowledge, 
Is there anything quite like this out there? Well, the short answer is um, absolutely not. First of all, there's no program out there that gets them what Noble Manhattan can provide. But there are very few creativity coaching programs out there, and none of them are as comprehensive as ours, provide as much support as ours. I would say to to say it in a, in a self-inflated kind of way, that kind of just knows as much as this program knows. This has top-level information, and as I say, 260 lessons, lots of modules, lots of information on coaching and business, which may interest folks, which is a very large um, opportunity. Over the last decade or so, when Forbes magazine and other magazines look at what companies think they need from their employees or from their business, coaching has been creeping up. It used to be like at about number 15 about a decade ago. Now it's up to number two or three. That is, companies believe they need to be more creative. And they mean a variety of things by that. They don't mean what a, what a creative person means precisely. They more mean something about innovation and problem solving rather than about manifesting human potential. But whatever it is they mean, a creativity coach could decide to aim herself in that direction and work with business. And our program does, I think, a beautiful job of helping um, coaches understand how that might be a marketplace for them. So I think it does special things that other programs don't do, and also much more that than other programs do. Okay, and maybe you could, to finish this bit, just say, say a few words about the overall marketplace for a, uh, someone who does this program, they get their diploma, and now they're out, they're going to look for clients. Yeah, let me divide it into three categories, just, just for ease of thinking. There are self-identified creative and performing artists, that is, writers, painters, musicians, people who identify themselves as creative app developers, um, game developers, a whole slew of people, millions and millions of people who self-identify as creative. So they are one huge market. Then there is business as a separate market. That is creativity and business as a phrase and working with business. And that's a separate, large, and lucrative market. But then there's a third market, which is actually the biggest market of all. And that's those people who are struggling with understanding what their life purposes are, how to make meaning in life, kind of have the sense that creativity ought to be on their plate somewhere, that they ought to be everyday creative somehow, whatever that means. And so they are looking for what a creativity coach can offer, namely help with becoming more everyday creative, more inspired, have a better imagination, just be a kind of a more robust, imaginative human being. So to say that simply, I think a new coach or a coach, a creativity coach could decide to work with creative performing artists and or work with business and or work with those people who want to be more everyday creative. Funnily, I was talking to um, a lady who's on the course right now. She started a few weeks ago and her aim is actually to work with teachers when she finished so that teachers have got the skills and the techniques to release the creativity of their young students. Absolutely. And there are all kinds of groups of, let's call them helpers, mm. teachers being one group of helpers, but therapists and mental health counselors and all sorts of folks who mean to be of help, who understand that their narrow way of working is narrow. Every, every profession has this narrow way of working and to include creativity in the way that they work will be a boon for their clients, a bonus for their clients, and something that they're already thinking about. So it's not heavy lifting to intrigue therapists or mental health counselors or teachers in the idea that, creativ that creativity is important to them and learning about creativity coaching might be valuable to them. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Eric. I'm going to open it up now to everyone and people can ask questions. Um, and then I want to talk about finances. I want to talk to you about the scholarships that are available from Noble Manhattan worldwide to all of our students. 
and how that works and so on. So if you have a question, then uh, the most efficient way is on Zoom, if you raise your hand, the little digital hand, or put up your physical hand, um, we will see you, and then I will call out your name, and you can ask your question, and bit by bit, we will get through everyone, hopefully, um, and uh, so no one loses the opportunity. So, um, we and have Im immediately, we have Iman. Um, so, Iman, over to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> actually live can you hear me you're cutting in and out how about now much yeah. better uh, it's it's a thing with my airpods i'm sorry That's it's okay. so good uh seeing you talking live now uh thank you so much because i'm in my uh, week 10 of the creativity coaching i'm loving it it's exactly how you say uh, this can be easy uh, I go throughout the weeks. I'm so happy. I want to learn more. It's so uh, relaxing, but at the same time, I'm curious to know what's next, what's next. Sometimes I just can't stop. <laughs> it's really amazing. Um, my, but my question is that I'm having a little bit of fears and even I'm writing down down in my reflections, uh, weekly reflection is how much creative should a coach be to be able to be a creativity coach? Let me answer it two ways. Um, one is a doctor may be overweight and still know what a good diet program is. So we understand that, that a coach may not necessarily write masterpieces or write symphonies and still be a wonderful coach. So there's a place of ease there not to worry about doing creative work oneself, comma, but there is a but. And the but is people who are taking this kind of program typically want to manifest their own potential, want to be creative. So I would say that parallel to, to being a creativity coach, one should take care of one's own creativity. One should pencil in whatever it is that one means to do, write that novel or paint or whatever it is, and make sure to do that, to include that in one's own life, to have that be one of their own life purposes. Because I do think it's hard to just serve and not be creative oneself if one is a creative. So I'm saying two things at once. One is be a creativity coach. Don't worry about your own creativity. And be a creativity coach and do worry about your own creativity because I think ultimately it's going to bother you or disappoint you if you don't manifest your own creativity. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Imam. Thank you very much. Um, surely there must be other questions. Now that we have Eric here, um, which we don't get a chance to, to grab him very often at all, his, his diary is jam-packed. So while we have Eric, are there any other questions for him about the yeah, program? In the chat. We have them in the chat. chat. Oh, we have them in the chat, do we? Sorry. That'll teach me, won't it? I should read. <laughs> um, okay, so let me go. Uh, starting, starting with Anne. She said, any practical tips on what are creative examples? Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I 100% understand the question, but let me give a, a top practical tip for creatives, the thing they need to understand the most. And I think that's the idea of daily practice. I did a book called The Power, the Power of Daily Practice. I believe that if creatives skip a few days, suddenly months and years vanish. That's what happens in life. And it disappoints them that they thought they were only going to miss three days of working on their novel and, and suddenly six months have vanished. So what a coach can help clients understand is that instituting a daily practice is a wonderful thing and may be invaluable, comma. And I also think it needs to be a morning practice. That is something you do before your, so to speak, real day starts. Because to try to get to your creating by the end of the day is difficult. Because not only are you tired by the end of the day, but folks are also typically a little blue by the end of the day, a little sad, 
by virtue of not having gotten to their real work on that day, their creative work on that day. So by being both a little a little sad and a little tired, it's hard at 7 p.m. to turn to your novel. That's why I think if a coach helps clients understand that working every day on their creative work is important, having it start every day first thing is important. Let me just add one tidbit since we appear to have enough time for me to add this. If creative folks turn to their creative work first thing each day, they get to make use of their sleep thinking. And this is different from dreaming. Everybody knows about dreaming. I don't need to say anything about dreaming. Dreaming happens in REM sleep. Thinking happens in non-REM sleep. We, Our brain is active all night doing one or the other, dreaming or thinking. If you go to bed with a sleep thinking prompt, something like, gee, I wonder what Mary would like to say to John in chapter three, that kind of that kind of question, your brain will actually work on that conversation. Mary and John will have a conversation all night long. And then when you wake up, all you need to do is take dictation. You can get 90 minutes or two hours of free creativity time just by making use of your sleep thinking. But this only works if you turn to your work first thing. The second you turn to the new day and start worrying about the day and all of the things that are going on in the day, your sleep thinking vanishes, it evaporates. So I'm saying a long-winded thing here, but the shorthand is one important practical idea that creativity coaches can sell to clients is the idea of a morning creativity practice that allows them to make use of their sleep thinking, that allows them also to make some meaning first thing each day, and that way the rest of their day can be half meaningless and they won't get depressed. It's really important to get to our real work first thing each day. Thank you, Eric. The next question from Stephen. He says, for a self-guided course, what opportunities are there to interact with others and more widely with Noble Manhattan? Thank you. I, I'm so glad you asked that. Many opportunities. First of all, every student is given their own dedicated customer care individual or personnel at head office. So you will have an individual that you can interact with personally on an ongoing, regular basis, not just during the course, but after. And there's no cost for that forever. Second, during the course, we create study buddy groups. These are groups of either four or five, never less than four, never more than five. So, And we hook you up with those. You move through the course as a pod, as a unit. And the study buddy groups meet every week for 30 minutes, three zero minutes. You set the time, we don't dictate. And during that period, you do some practice coaching, you share uh, your thoughts on the, co the exercises, on some written work, and you act as a support mechanism for each other. So that's the study buddy groups every week. Then we have a monthly live development webinar. Now we have a lot of training webinars which have content, lessons, but we have a once a month open uh, live webinar with no agenda. And every student can come to that. You can ask any question, any issue, any, it doesn't even have to be a problem. It's not negative. You can ask about how do I do this? How do I do that? And we have one of our master coaches who runs those and they are there for you every month as well. So quite a lot of physical interaction. Um, I hope that, hope that covered that, Stephen. Um, Vicky has asked, oh, I, this is a good question. <laughs> you must have been reading my notes, Vicky. Is prior learning taken into account? Yes, it is. We have a concept called APL. Uh, universities do this accreditation for prior learning. So if you already have knowledge, experience, skills, training, qualifications, and the word is in an equivalent area, equivalent, then we will give you exemptions from part of the course. You still get exactly the same qualification at the end, but it cuts down a little bit, or sometimes quite a lot, on the actual work you have to do. And the reason is, we don't feel that it is morally, ethically right to make you or to charge you money for 
and make you do something that you already know. So yes, and we send you a form called an APL, Accreditation for Prior Learning. You complete it, you submit it to us, we give it to our panel, they review it, and they will come back to you with a list of exemptions that you are entitled to. Um, ah, Stephen, does this training count for credits towards any of the international coaching bodies such as ICF? Great question. As a company, well, you will find that most coach training companies out there, and by the way, there are nearly 900. Noble Manhattan is in the top three worldwide. Uh, the measurements, in case you're interested, are length of time, number of students trained, we've done over 25,000, geographical footprint, we're in 25 countries, and annual revenue. So that's, that's the measurements that they use. Yes, most coach training companies, if they are accredited at all, are usually accredited by one organization. Uh, you mentioned the ICF, that's a very well-known one. We are accredited by five. Not only the, that one, but also the ILM, Institute for Leadership and Management, City and Guilds, which is also worldwide, the IAPCNM, International Authority for Professional Coaching and Mentoring, which is in 134 countries, and finally, the IRCM, International Regulator, for coaching and mentoring, which, strangely enough, most people don't realise was set up by a member of the House of Lords in the UK and has now gone international. So we are accredited by five external independent bodies. Uh, Gerard, you missed, uh, missed uh, the last question. I missed, I probably missed lots, right. What specific skills do creativity coaches learn? That's over to Eric. The basic skills of listening and being present and being human, those basic skills, and then the skills associated with an understanding of the creative personality, the special challenges of the creative life, how to hold clients both accountable while providing support. I think one of the one of the most important skills to learn is how to use language so that you can say something to a client that maybe is a little difficult to say without coming across as criticizing. So how to use language is a, is a very important skill. So there are many skills that every coach needs to understand about relaxing, settling into a session summarizing at the end of a session so that the client leaves the session understanding which one or two or three three things he or she will need to do over the next week or month those basic coaching skills and then that deep understanding of the creative life and the creative process that i discussed before thank you eric now there are some more questions i am going to come back to those but i want to jump for a moment and i want to talk about our policy on pricing. And I want to show you uh, the cost of the course. And more importantly, I want to show you the scholarships that are available. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you our website, and then I'll come back in five minutes. And I know that Eric has to go in about 10 or 15 minutes. What? I'm, I'm showing you uh, the website, uh, Creativity Coach Training Program. Uh, one of the questions was about the structure and the content. On this website, we give a lot of details. I'm scrolling down as I talk about the structure, the content. There's an interview with Eric here for 15 minutes going into it in more detail uh, about the program, uh, who it's for. Uh, we talk about the weekly program, the reflection essay, the 21 hour webinars, study buddy groups, and so on. But I want to come down to the pricing. When we looked at this program, we looked at other coach training programs out there of similar length and not even the same content. And some of those programs are charging eight or nine thousand US dollars, which I quite frankly think is outrageous. There's a, there's a concept, you know, and there's a big difference between a company making a profit and a company, what I call profiteering. 
Are you familiar with that word or the concept? Um, a company has to make a profit to pay their salaries, to keep going, to so on. But there's a huge difference between that and profiteering. And I can't help thinking that in this industry of ours, there are one or two companies in that bracket. So we priced the program. I'm scrolling down. I'll get there eventually. Um, in US dollars at $3,150, um, UK pounds, that's 2500 And we've built in a payment plan so people can pay over time. But we also offer scholarships. And I want to talk to you about scholarships. Every single person is entitled to a scholarship. Everyone. Now, it might be small, might be large. It depends on your personal situation. You can see there's a button here below the pricing that says apply for your scholarship. If you click on that, it will take you to a form. You complete the form. It comes to our head office. We put it in front of our scholarship panel. They review it and they come back and they offer you a scholarship. A scholarship is not a loan. It is money that we give you that you never have to pay back. So although I just said the cost of the program is 3,150 US dollars, it actually won't be for almost everyone. Because with a scholarship, it will reduce that dramatically. And whatever it ends up at, you then have a payment plan where you can pay that over many, many months. So I want to talk to you about how universities and how we run a scholarship program. It's called an aggregate fund. So every six months, our finance team sit down and they work out what the company can afford to give away in scholarships. This is a normal practice. All universities do it. And we set aside a fund. Now, I'm just, let's say, for example, that was 50,000 US dollars. We then start to issue scholarships. Some people will get 1,000 scholarship, uh, one, some people get one and a half thousand dollar scholarship or 2,000 and so on. Every time that happens, it eats away at the fund. So there comes a point where the fund is empty. Does everyone understand that concept? Uh, I hope I'm, I don't mean to talk down to anyone, but I just want you to, to understand. So we create a scholarship fund every six months. And um, sometimes it runs out before the end of that. Sometimes there is money left over and that carries over into the next and goes on to the next scholarship fund. So I just wanted to mention that to you. Everyone is allowed to apply for a scholarship without having to commit to doing the course. So you can apply to see what you would get before you make the decision whether you would like to go ahead. There is no other coach training company in the world that does this. None. Oh, Tin Tinke or Tinike, you you have a question. Uh, yeah, is that the same for the um, the exemption as well? That if you apply for that, that that is that you can decide before that, that you can know what you would pay. Absolutely, before. absolutely. Okay. It's the thank only. It, it's the fair way of doing things. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. G Gerard, so, by the way, I don't I don't have to rush away, just so you know. I, oh, sorry. I thought you did. Oh, that's good to know. No, thank I've you. I've got extra time. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the questions. Um, I will try and do them all. Bassos from sunny Greece has said, what is the rollout plan for launching the course in all noble Manhattan markets? Oh, good question. In every one of our 25 countries where we currently trade, we have either a master distributor or a country manager. And they will be given the authority and the tools and the backup to roll it out within their territory. So we would work with every country manager and they would roll it out um, in their time frame. We don't push people. We don't put pressure uh, on anyone. So if you were the country manager in Spain, we would make this available to you so that you can make it available to your students or potential students in the Spanish market and the same for Greece 
and so on. I hope that answers your question. Um, Thank you, yeah. Okay, Catherine has asked, does it mean that if I, if someone who doesn't intend to become a coach can use this training program in order to self-coach or self-propel personal creativity and the creativity process? Eric, I guess that's for you. That's for me, 100%. Um, when I train creativity coaches, there's always a part of each lesson which speaks to them as a creative and invites them to learn more about self-coaching. This program really is deeply geared to helping folks not only learn how to coach, but how to be more creative themselves. And that's what people experience in the trainings that I've led for these 20 years, is that in a given week, they might act as a coach. That is, they would answer a lesson as a coach. The next week, they'd be so intrigued or moved by the lesson for their own personal use that they would respond, they would respond that week as a self coach, as a creative person. So you will learn a ton about how to be more creative, how to show up to your work, how to complete work, and also the psychological issues that every human being has to deal with and that creatives have to deal with as well. And that is how to deal with existential sadness. That is one Wondering if your work really matters, or even if you really matter, those deep questions that creatives confront. All of that is addressed in the program. And I think it's deeply rewarding for creatives. And they, they learn a lot and get a lot. Thank you, Eric. Diaz you. has asked two questions. I'll deal with one and I'll hand one to you, Eric. So his two questions are, is the certification based on DISC, D-I-S-C methodology? I'll deal with that. Second, how much self-awareness a creative coach must have in order to serve their clients? I'll hand that over to you in a minute, Eric. So, no, Diam, the short answer is it is not based on DISC methodology. Um, in the world of education, you've got different levels. Uh, certificate, diploma, and a degree, a degree from a college or university. This 97% of coaching programs are certificate programs. And that's fine. This is actually a diploma program. It is significantly higher than a certificate. So it's not as high as a degree, but much higher than a, um, uh, a certificate. And no, we don't use the, the DISC method to, in order to evaluate people. Um, we, we base it on the work that they do during the program. Uh, everyone has to submit an evidence portfolio oh, both during and after. Um, and so it's on the work and the continuous assessment during the program. Eric, over to you. How much self-awareness does a creativity coach have to have in order to serve their clients? Well, more rather than less, of course. <laughs> That's um, a, fr a phrase that I use in helping um, coaches understand what's necessary is the idea of a step to the side. Very simple idea. Rather than impulsively rushing through life not self-aware, if we understand the idea of taking a step to the, taking a pause, not rushing, and being available to understanding what's going on and being more present to what's going on, of course, we're hoping that for our coaches and we're hoping that for our clients. Self-awareness is one of the things that coaches need and it's also one of the things our clients need. I believe that the program, by by the way it's designed and by its content, helps both coaches and clients become more self-aware. To answer the question simply, it is one of the goals of the program to make coaches more self-aware so that they can help their clients become more self-aware. Great, thank you. Now, Melissa has asked an interesting question. I'm going to read it out, but I, I think I've, I, I know what she's made. She, I, she says, what does an expert like Eric Meisel charge an hour? And what would a recommended starting point for someone getting started after completing the program? And then she says, or is it more a package, say three to six months? or once a month type program. Okay, let me answer that briefly and then I'll hand over to Eric. What I didn't mention 
we're offering a bonus. We run a completely separate course, a very dynamic course called Build Your Coaching Practice. We charge for that. But we are going to give that away free of charge to everyone registering on the Creativity Coach Training Program. It, it's a classroom program that I deliver. We've had it filmed. We've put it online. We've broken it up. It's an eight-hour day, uh, how to get clients, how to build a database, how to market, how to convert. We cover how to charge. We cover pricing and how to have a menu of pricing. We cover all of that. We normally charge many hundred dollars for that program, hundreds. We're going to give it away completely free to every person who registers on this um, particular program. So the good news, Melissa, is, I mean, you don't have to. If you did register, we'll give you that. But Eric, if you wanted to jump in at all. Sure, absolutely. I have two different kinds of answers because I'm actually changing my pricing, and I'll explain why. I believe that my prices are quite moderate or modest. I charge $175 a session for a 45-minute coaching session. I do 45 minutes because I do sessions back-to-back, -back, typically four or five sessions back-to-back, -back, and I need the 15 minutes in between to make some popcorn or have a glass of water or something. So these are 45-minute sessions at $175 a session. I have a four session package at $500 US dollars and a year package at $1,500 $1, for the year. That's one coaching session a month for the year. I only meet with clients monthly. So that those are my current numbers. I'm changing that because I have about 60 individual clients and I'm finding that I have too many other things to do to, to maintain the monthly connection with 60 clients. So I'm moving to meeting with clients every two months. So my, my package rates and annual rate will change because now I'll only meet with clients six times a year rather than 12 times a year with email contact in between. And let me say that because that's important. You would, you would lose contact with your clients if there was not email coaching or contact in between. But I invite clients to, uh, to approach me via email as much as they like, hold themselves accountable. At any rate, the short answer is, $175 a single session this year, and that'll probably change for next year. Thank you, Eric. Uh, thank you for being so open. Uh, one final question from uh, Fiona. I'll read it out. I come from a creative background and work with many creatives and have completed a diploma in coaching with you, meaning us, some years ago. I had wanted to set up as a creativity coach before. Uh, I have had a major illness. I've come out the other end of that illness and wondering whether this course would be helpful for me. Okay. I cannot answer that directly. And we're not here to try and get as many students as we can. We want people who register on this program to do so because it's right for them. All I can say, therefore, Fiona, is everyone here has the right to book in a one-to-one -one private coffee with either one of our country managers or one of our customer care advisors and just have a private coffee on Zoom and have a chat. They will talk to you about the program. You can ask any questions. They'll send you more information. You can have a think about it. You can come back, have another coffee on Zoom. There is no time limit, okay? So don't feel under pressure in any way. Take yeah, the time investigate we use the expression do your due diligence get every question answered and then then go i guess this is the right time to say go with your intuition yep let me piggyback on that just for a second and that is an awful lot of people are dealing with chronic illnesses um health issues and and that's one of the reasons that this is not only self-paced, but also that it extends more than the year that we say you could do it in. You have more time than that because we understand that everybody has a real life. Everybody is busy and taxed by life. So all I want to say is the program is designed for, for real adults, for grown-ups who have real lives and who are dealing with things. And 
hopefully we've we've built that into the program successfully so that you can get to the end of the program and become the coach you want to be. Thank you, Eric. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming up to the end of the hour. Um, forgive me if I've missed any of the questions on the chat. Do we have any final live questions? Maybe one last question before I close close the call. My my one thing. Hi, Gerard. Hi, hi, Hilary. Hi. Um, and I might have missed something because I got slightly distracted during the call by uh, a client. Um, the the design of the course. How much of it is really interactive? Okay, um, so there are pra practice and feedback rather oh. than just theory and uh, passive learning. Right. There are there are a number of um, activities that will be running in parallel. So we log you onto our learning management system, quite a sophisticated online system. Every week, and by the way, you don't have to take 52 weeks. We've just structured it at that. You could put your blinkers on and go a lot, lot quicker, or you can take longer. But we've just given that to manage people's expectations. So every week, you would engage in a number of exercises, around five per week. Lessons, these are. Then there are 20 pre-recorded videos by Eric. They are between one hour and one and a half hours long. After each exercise and after each video, you would uh, write your reflective notes from that. Then there are the study buddy groups. Every single week, you will engage with um, uh, up to four other coaches uh, on a platform like Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Hangouts, something like that, for half an hour. That would be every week. Then, at the same time, there are exercises that you will be engaged in um, as you do the lessons. And then there are there is what we call an evidence portfolio that you will keep up to date as you move through. There is a book to read called The Coach's Way. And we ask you to write a critique on that book, Hillary. Now, a critique, you cannot get a critique wrong. A critique is your thoughts, your, I, your ideas, your reflection on the book. And you cannot, of course, get your own thoughts wrong. Uh, but we ask you to write a critique and submit that, and that gets viewed and so on. So a number of activities on a parallel basis, and then the monthly live interactive webinars as well and and the exercises that you mention are those an interaction with others on the program and do you they're, get they're both videoed and do you get any feedback for no no they, we don't you don't video them but some of the exercises you will do on your own some of them ask you to engage with other people and uh, do certain actions and and things but not none of the course itself is Kind of curated interactive no we deliver groups or anything like that no I, many of our other courses are as you might be familiar we have classroom we have our master classes residential programs this is deliberately as uh, structured we use the phrase self-paced so that people can take their own time and move through it in their own way if it was like our practitioner diploma you would have to turn up at certain times at a location um, which can be good and bad, and we have people from all over the world on this. Yeah, and so just to follow up on that, and at the end of this program, someone who is uh, is not yet accredited as a coach, mm -hmm. would they be accredited with a professional body? Yes, they would. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, and one last. Oh, there's one hand that's gone up. Monica from. Pa Su sunny Pamplona in northern Spain. <laughs> hi, Monica. Hi, Gerard, and hi, Eric. Very nice to meet you. I'm I'm very curious about uh, the experience that you have, and when Gerard mentioned about a student that's currently uh, taking the the program who is actually coaching teachers. I wanted to ask you about your own experience. What has been your most transformational or inspiring outcome that you've seen uh, after doing a creativity coaching? 
in people that you have coached? There are two kinds of ways to answer that. One is just being su supportive of my clients is wonderful to me. That is whether or not they're making any particular progress or excellently dealing with all of their challenges, irrespective of all that, just being able to help another human being is the best part of it all. But then th I can move a client from never having written a book, let's say, to outcomes like a two book deal for 150,000 pounds. That kind of, that kind of journey. I've taken clients on that kind of journey over the course of, let's say, a couple of years from wanting to write a novel to being very successful and making money from writing novels. So there's the kind of external validation success journey story that I can tell. But then there's just the everyday being supportive of another human being story that's most usual and also most rewarding, actually. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to read one last final comment and then we'll, we'll cut it. So, Hilary, this is a reply to your question from um, Perid Greener. She, she says, hi, Hilary. I am a current student in the program. The study buddy sessions are as interactive as you make them and you can join as many as you'd like. For example, I am in two study buddy groups and one group is just with one other woman and we are able to move through a lot of great helpful tools and coaching between the two of us. I hope that is helpful. So, um, very helpful. Thank you. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, we've run over time. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me. I have recorded today. If you want, the recording will be available, um, for you at any point in the future. If you need anything, just send an email. Just send an email and we will be there to help and support with any questions that you may have.